Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Welcome to Ahkam SOS, the show that brings you the Ahkam to do with Ramadan this season. And I hope you're having a very, very special, pious, full of taqwa and full of tawfiq Ramadan, inshallah. My name is Mohsin Shah, and joining me as always is Sheikh Ali Ma'a. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikhna. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullah. How's your fast going, Sheikh? Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. MashaAllah. Shaykhna, we've been discussing the different ahkam rules in regards to fasting by His Eminence, the Grand Ayatollah Sayyid Sadiq Shirazi. And last time we left off at the things that invalidate fast. Now, one uh, aspect or one uh, thing that invalidates the fast is actually swallowing something, especially swallowing dust. Um, does swallowing dust break your fast? Is, is it totally invalid? أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وصلى الله على محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين اللهم صل على محمد The sixth criteria with regard to invalidating the one's fast is allowing the thick dust to reach one's throat and as you may know that the fast becomes void and باطل when any substance, be it something that you can eat or drink or something that you can't eat or you can't drink, like the dust and mud and soil and so forth. Whatever reaches the throat, then that is where um, the fast becomes invalidated and bottled. Um, with this regard, now allowing thick dust to reach the throat, um, now let the dust which we allow to reach the, the throat, for example, by purpose, deliberately. So we allow it to reach um, by purpose, be it the dust of the flower, for example, the wheat flower, for example, something we, we can eat, or the dust of the soil, the dust of the clay, and so forth. Any type of dust which is thick, allowed to reach the uh, the throat and by purpose that will make the psalm and the fasting void and battle um, the Sayyid also says um, as a obligatory precaution that one should not allow even the thin dust uh, to reach the throat essential Sheikh, you're talking about dust but what about uh, things like smoke or steam even does that invalidate the fast? Exactly. Again, um, for the one who, by purpose, allows the thick steam um, to reach the one's throat, um, the smoke of the cigarettes, for example, shisha cigarettes and such like, if they reach um, the throat area, then it will make the fasting void and bottle again. So that's also one, one of the criteria as well that we have to make sure we avoid smoking in this month, um, the shisha as well, for example, and uh, of course the thick steam. Okay, so even, even that, the e-cigarettes though, the vaping ones, even that's not allowed? Exactly, if, if, if there is thick steam or smoke, then that also, we have to avoid it. Okay. Sheikh, what about those who suffer from asthma? They have to take inhaling pumps. Um, are they allowed? Because this, it's, it's very, very uh, thin, this, this sort of uh, medicine, is this gas slash powder type thing is it's very very thin just you can't even see it sometimes is that allowed to be uh, inhaled or is that does that actually make the fast void as well well with regard to the asthma sufferers um the gas that they use something like they the gas yeah, they, they spray in, in, inside their throat the inhalers these are mainly um don't have that particles, that thick particles, let's say thick dust or liquids. Um, so they are mainly gas inhaled inside the, th the throat and to the lungs. So in this case, there's no issue with using uh, the inhalers for the asthma for sufferers. Ah, sad. What's next on the list in terms of uh, invalidatory or things that invalidate the fast? 
Yes, the next one is immersing one head inside the water. Now, mm -hmm. one of the invalidators of, um, of fast is if somebody immerses his full head, entire head, inside the water. So let's say if somebody goes to the swimming pool or to the seaside or a pond or a lake um, and he puts his head or the entire head or dives inside that water, that will invalidate his fasting according to the Sayyid's uh, rule. And that's one of the mubtalat. So no, no swimming then in, in Ramadan? Well, you're allowed to uh, go inside the water, be it in the swimming pool or in the lake or anywhere else. But make sure that your head doesn't go inside the water. So you go up to the, your neck, for example, and you and remain, remain mm -hmm. in, inside the water. The head is outside the water and you can remain in the water. That's fine. Sheikh, what happens if you decide to go swimming? Um, or you're near a swimming pool and you accidentally slip into the swimming pool. Somebody pushes you in and covers your whole body and your whole head is fully immersed into water unintentionally. Then it, this is the fast battle. Well, if somebody falls unwillingly and unintentionally inside the water, let's say a friend pushes him inside the water or he slips or anything else. Um, because it's, it wasn't by purpose, then his fast is, is valid and accepted. It's just, just that if somebody deliberately puts his head inside and dives inside the water, it is where uh, the psalm and the fasting will be battled and he has to uh, do the qada, of course, because that fast now is battled. Oh. That's, that's the issue, main issue. Yeah. Some ulama said that, is, that will, does not mix uh, the psalm battle. It depends on the marja you follow, but the say Allah, he says that you have to uh, you know, re the, redo the, the, uh, the song because it's battle. Oh, okay, mashallah. Sheikhna, if someone um, forgets that he's fasting and decides to swallow dust or you know smoke or something like that, does that invalidate the fast? So, so he swallowed it and then he remembers, oh, I was fasting. Hold on, is his fast battle or not? Well. In such case, as I've mentioned, with regard to food and drink, if somebody eats uh, unintentionally, he thinks that he's not in, let's say, in a state of psalm. He's used to have breakfast every day. And the same thing applies to smoking. He begins to smoke, for example, and allows thick dust to come to go through his throat, for example. In this case, because it was done unwillingly and unintentionally, then it won't um, invalidates his fast so he, he can remain in fast and there's no qaba and his fast is correct and sahih so shaykhna the next inhibitor or invalidator of fast is um, to remain in the state of janaba now if one wakes up extremely close to the time of Hajar Adhan and he's in, in the state of janaba according to the Sayyid what should he do? does he have enough time to eat and do the ghusl? What well, if there's not enough time to eat and do ghusl? Should he do the ghusl and not eat, keep the fast? Or should he eat, do the ghusl after Fajr Adhan? What should the individual do? Well, basically, um, fasting is also a ibadah, a worship, like the praying of daily prayers. And for the one who wants to enter into the, the daytime of fasting, the daylight of fasting, and begins his fasting from the Fajr time, he must make sure he's in a state of purity. So if he is in the state of Janaba, he must make sure that he is pure, he is Tahir, by um, doing the ghusl, the wajib ghusl of Janaba. And then he can uh, begin his fasting day by the Fajr time, and he prays his Salat subh as I've said, without the wudu, because the Janaba ghusl itself will uh, uh, be replaced by the wudu. Um, if somebody wakes up late, that there would be no time for that individual to do the ghusl. Let's say he wakes up and only five minutes left to the Fajr time. And in this case, if he remains with that state of Janaba, then there's a problem with his fast. In this case, he must do tayammum, okay. which is instead of the ghusl. And I mentioned how we Previous season, yeah, exactly. we, we did. We did. So 
he does the tayammum instead of the ghusl and when he is uh, entered into the fajr time and the daytime of fasting um, he is with this tayammum he's pure now and then he can do ghusl and then praise the salah and so forth but the main thing he must be in the purity when he starts fasting okay. he cannot remain with this state mm -hmm. and then begins the ibadah which is the fasting with this impurity state so he may, must make sure other he does the ghusl first if there's no time he does the tayammum and then he starts uh, fasting with with purity uh, so Sheikh, now what if 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 the person deliberately um, didn't do his ghusl until uh, closer to the time of Fajr as in he woke up an hour before Fajr Adhan he, he or she um, ate food and then you know stopped and had about 20 minutes enough time to do ghusl um, but decided not to do ghusl and to actually delay the ghusl to such a state that there's only 5 minutes left before Adhan time well, in this situation, because this person uh, um, willingly and intentionally neglected the purity before the Fajr time, in other words, he entered into the Fajr time and the daytime of fasting with impure body and did not perform the ghusl or the tayammum, which is instead of ghusl, badal al-ghusl, in this situation, this individual um, Fasting will be invalidated and batil and he has to do qada again for this day because he entered um, the fasting uh, day without ghusl uh, or tayammum and he had the time or was able to do that but he, del he delayed the time deliberately so the, the psalm will be batil for that day and he has to do qada Can that individual not do tayammum just before adhan or fajr? As in two, three minutes before the Adhan, can you do tayammum to enter it uh, in Tahara? Or is it no because you deliberately delayed uh, any form of um, purif purification, the fast is butter? Well, if there is time for tayammum, then he must do the tayammum. Now his taklif, his duty, um, because he delayed the ghusl, he had an hour, he just left it, you know, I don't know, doing something in the Sahar time, eating, drinking, and he delayed the ghusl till the very short time before the Adhan Fajr, and there's no time for ghusl, then he must switch to a tayammum. It's a wajib must. He must do tayammum, but the ghusl, and then he begins his, his fasting with a pure body, which is the tayammum. And then he does the ghusl afterwards. But that's the main thing that. Um, um, the person should do something before the Fajr time. Either ghusl, if time is too short, tayammum. You can't just stay there and sit down and say, well, uh, five minutes left, there's no point of me doing ghusl or tayammum. You know, I have to go out, search for clay or soil. And then you just uh, ignore it and delay it. Then the fast will be invalidated and you have to do the qaba as well. And the Sayyid also says that um, that person who did not do the tayammum or the ghusl, he must refrain from eating and drinking the whole day. Although the psalm is batil, mm. but um, as a wajib obligatory respecting this holy month, we have something called uh, respecting the holy month of Ramadan. Obligatory not to eat or drink, to refrain from eating and drinking till Maghrib time, Adhan Maghrib time. And then he has to also do the qada as well. So. In either cases, he must not eat or drink. It doesn't mean that, well, it's an excuse for me now. I'm going to start eating and drink because my psalm is batil, so I'm going to start eating. No, you have to refrain from eating and drinking, and it's wajib. They could add uh, that you refrain from eating and drinking for that uh, holy day, you know, the month of Ramadan. Asen, Sheikh. Sheikh, what happens to those people who, um, unfortunately, they're, they're deep sleepers? And uh, let's say somebody was in Janaba and decided to go to sleep 10, 11 o'clock at night and said, when I wake up for uh, suhoor, I'll do the ghusl then. But was a deep sleeper and slept throughout the whole of suhoor, slept throughout the whole of fajr, woke up at 9 o'clock. 
Can that person keep a fast? Can he do, go and do ghusl and continue his fast? Well, for such people who are uh, sleep uh, so deeply and um, for long hours and they can't wake up, uh, even some of them for fajr time, they miss the fajr time because of this situation of deep sleep. For such people, it's wajib, mandatory for them to do first ghusl a night before they sleep. Do the ghusl, it's wajib for them, the say it says. They do the ghusl first and they sleep. And they can wake up whenever they, w they wish and continue their fast as long as they have the intention of the fasting. Um, so if they wake up after the fajr, they have the ghusl fine. But if they know that they have this uh, situation of deep sleep and they sleep, and then they wake up after the fajr time or in the morning, after the sunrise, for example, and they even miss their salat subh, for example. In this case, uh, for, those, for, for such people, their fasting will be bottled and void. And they have to do, according to Sayyid, the qada of that day and also give the kafara uh -huh. for, for this purpose. Um, however, if they managed to wake up before the fajr time and they did ghusl or tayammum even, that's fine. The fast will be validated. That's fine. Shaykh, what about those who went to bed with the niyyah of keeping a fast the next day, were in deep sleep, didn't wake up for fajr, didn't wake up for suhoor? And woke up and they were in the state of Janaba. They, they've had a wet dream or something. What about them? Is, is it the same for them that their fast is battered? They, they can't continue? For such people, individuals who wake up later on and they find themselves that uh, they are in, let's say, a wet dream and as they call it, ihtilam. In this case, it was an unintentional ejaculation or unwillingness to, to do such thing then their fast is sahih, is, 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 is valid and they just have to do ghusl for Salat al-Dhuhr al-Asr and, and so forth and that's, that's fine Then carry on Inshallah Thank you very much Sheikh Nassan and thank you to all those joining us for Hikam SOS I'm, I'm sure that it was very very knowledgeable for yourself Inshallah join us tomorrow as we'll be discussing more topics in regards to Hikam of so until then Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh